I'm Dana Hokana, and I get excited teaching you about horses. I get so excited about the whole, the whole concept of understanding horses, understanding how their bodies work, understanding how their minds work, understanding how to ride that horse like a team member and partner instead of only a master. Yes, we have to master them to a degree, but we can do it in a way that we become a partnership with your horse to where they love their job. And one of the nicest things that we do is to be able to smoothly guide our horse through all our patterns, through all that we do. Think about it. Anytime you're on a horse and it doesn't look like you're putting a lot of effort into it, when you look effortless, you're going to win. You're going to plus or you're going to sure enjoy your ride. And some of the things that we've all gotten bad habits in is using a lot of signals to get a response, such as guiding. Like I'm going to talk about guiding smoothly through a pattern. Many of us put our body into it, pick our hand up, give our leg a lot of work. We add a lot of cues and signals that sometimes we really don't need to add. And one of the most important components to guiding smoothly through a pattern is understanding the basic principle that your horse needs to stay between your bridle reins and your legs and your body. Think of that, of all horsemanship. My horse will stay between my bridle reins. His shoulders will stay between these reins. When I ride one-handed, do you know that these are almost like a triangle? And almost I connect to the horse's mouth. The reins come up in the shape of a triangle. And until I open a door or a space to move them over one way or another, or a door and a space to bring them back, to back up, until I do any of these items, my horse needs to stay right where I put him. So one of, the, one of the things that can help make our pattern beautiful, one of the things that can help make us guide smoothly and effortlessly through a pattern is to teach our horse to respond to the signal with our hand low, to make it smooth, to make it soft. So an example of that is to start off. I love to call it hunt your thumb. My thumb is down, my hand is down, I'm going to guide to the left. And, and as I'm asking, I'm still asking, I'm having to pick my hand up now to get much of a guide. And that did not look as smooth and effortless as it would have had my hand been low and I kept my hand low. Let's try it two ways and see what you think looks better. And if we're going to be on a trail course or a western riding course, ranch riding course, ranch trail course, equitation, horsemanship, whatever it may be. If we have to add a big move like that, okay, to get a turn, right? What do you think? That or what if we sit up and we've got our horse trained to listen to my cue with my hand low, right? Now, what if I asked him with my hand low, but it felt like I was begging him or needing more help? You see, that's why you as a rider go to your leg, your body. That's why you have to pick your hand up because you need more help because they're not responding to the first signal you gave them. So if I become mindful and conscious of that, I'm going to ride and work on them responding to the first signal I give them. So if I ask them, if I'm riding like this and I'm asking for a right turn like right now and it's just not happening, I need to bring in the reinforcements, right? I need to reinforce that cue to let him know that I meant to turn, right? But if you ride mindlessly, if you ride in such a way that you're not demanding your result, right? Or say you're talking to friends oh yeah how's it going and i'm in the next class and i'm here and here i just undid any possible training i might have needed to have him sharp and between my bridle reins and that's so easy to do we all need that reminder we all need a coach we all need feedback on that so i am going to teach you how to effort effortlessly guide through any pattern of course that you want and the first step to that is to ride mindfully and to be aware, to be aware of exactly where my hand is and what I'm asking. I'm asking, he's sort of coming on slowly, so I've got to bring in the reinforcement. 
And I always like to say, if you can reinforce your cue with the very cue that you gave as their punishment, that is good horse training. By that I mean, I'm not gonna spur him over, or kick him over when he didn't turn. I'm gonna reinforce with my rein and my hand by making a direct move like Oliver, get over here, get over off my rein. I meant it when I asked you off my rein. So get over off the rein, right? And then I try again. And honestly, this takes patience, right? It takes time, but there's quite a few techniques to it that I can teach you. Again, I ask, again, I had to beg. So again, I give a correction. Again, I walk forward. Again, I ask, again, I had to beg, partly because the gate is right there. So again, I have to go forward, ask again. And this is better, this is better. But it's not gonna give me those plus one maneuvers. And I'm gonna show you how. We've got to improve on that. So if you want a lot more information on this, there is a lot of information that I'm filming an amazing study and teaching on this subject. Join Team Hokana Video Club. It has answers for so many things. There's 230 videos on there, approximately, with all kinds of topics on everything that can help you to get what you want from you and your horse's ride together. They will help you become a better horseman.